Hi, it's Dougie from Valto, and this video is all about customizing your Canvas Power App, and it's a follow-on from the previous video of the series, which was titled Creating a Canvas App from SharePoint. Now, in this video, we're going to take a little look about how we now customize our app. So, once we've created our app, we can click on the play button across the top right corner to see how the app actually works. So this is what it'd be like to an end user when they were using it on their mobile phone, or if you embedded it inside of SharePoint, or what we're going to do is embed it in Teams later on. So when we click on this plus button across the top, this is where we can create a new item. So we can just put a new item in here and say, um, trip downstairs incident. Incident type was a employee accident. Um, and the date was today and the location was in the office and we can fill out all this form. Once we're happy with it, we can click on the save button and that'll then add our new item. So that plus button across the top gives us our new item uh, page. When we click through to the item, we can see this is the view of the uh, item and we can also edit it by clicking on this pencil button here, which takes us to this page. Now, these are the fields which are pulling through from that SharePoint list that we created in our previous video. Um, but what if we wanted to uh, remove some of these fields and we don't want all of the fields to always be there? Or maybe we're missing fields and we need to add some more. So to do that, we come back out of the play mode by clicking on the cross across the top. Um, and we go into our form. So the form will be on the edit screen, as well as you remember, you've got a view form on the detail screen. But we'll start with the edit screen. So when you open that up, you'll see you've got your form here, your edit form. So you click on that. And to edit the fields, we click on the edit fields button on the right hand side. And this is where we can see all the different fields which are on here. Now we can remove them by clicking on the three dots and clicking on remove. And we can add them back on by clicking on the add field and then typing in here or using, uh, sorry, it was called witness. Uh, and then we select them, click on add. That will then add them back into our form. We can also move them around by simply just dragging and dropping. So we can drag this up to the top. Um, and we can drag this one further up as well, makes sense. And then we can put it in an order which kind of makes sense to us. Um, so we might want to have the date of the incident slightly higher up, um, the location uh, up. Um, and you can move this around to sort of fit how you want this to be. But remember, this is just the edit form. We also need to do the exact same on the details screen as well if you want it to be aligned in the same way. So again, we click on the form, we click on edit fields, and then we can move these around um, so we can get these in the same order in a matching kind of order of how we would like it to be displayed. So once we've got our, our uh, fields updated in our form, uh, we might want to also change how the home page um, is displayed. So if we go back to our home page within here, we can see it's already given as a kind of a default kind of layout. Now we can update this really easily. Um, so if we select something, what you should know about this sort of um, the sort of home page is it's built with a gallery. So this gallery here is is what is going to show all the items which are pulling from that SharePoint list, and every item which is created in here is also then storing automatically in SharePoint. And then this gallery is pulling through uh, all of those items. Now, whenever we make uh, an update, we're only making updates to this very top item here, and then that will reflect um, through all the other items as well. So, say for example, I made this one move down a little bit. You'll see on the other items, it will also change that. Now, this text is usually by default the title of the form uh, item. So this is just achieved with a this item dot title, but this item will also have all the properties um, for that particular item. So all those fields that we entered before inside of our SharePoint list, all of those will be available plus a load more kind of service um, kind of system fields as well, uh, like the created by and the modified by and things like that. Um, so we might want to update this. So say, for example, uh, at the moment, this is the date of the incident, but we might also want to um, put the, the the employee name as well along with this. So to combine that, um, we can put a, uh, a symbol to uh, sort of connect these together. Um, and then we can uh, start typing, for example, this item dot employee because the name of the, the the employee field was just called employee now this because um 
it has multiple properties associated to this field because it's a people field. It doesn't just have their name, but has their email address and things like that. It's going to ask you to click on the, uh, say, a full stop. And then you can see all the different properties you can tap into for that particular um, field type. So we've got things like the department of the employee, the display name, the email, and all of this is being pulled from the Azure AD. So I'm going to say I want the display name of the person. But as you can see, there's no spacing between this. It's just added it straight together. So I'm also going to add a little bit of space in between those, maybe even put a little line between them. Um, and then that way we can see the date that it was raised and the employee that it was uh, affecting. Now this is just showing the type of incident. So we can see it's an employee accident or, or so on. And I'm happy just to leave that that way. Now there's all sorts of different types of stylings we can do. So we could have uh, maybe move these along a little bit if we wanted to. Uh, we can add some icons. We can make different kind of bold, italic. Maybe we want to underline the titles. Um, but all the styling and all the kind of icons and um, controls which you add inside this top box are automatically going to be added um, throughout um, these other items as well. So by default, uh, if you notice when you click on the play mode, there's no real like hover or anything like that or any way of knowing that which item that is your, your mouse is sort of uh, selected. So a cool little tip with this is if you select your gallery on the left hand side, you uh, scroll down to the bottom, you can see you've got a uh, transition type uh, and display mode across the bottom. But if you select that transition drop box, you've got here, you've got the difference between pop and push. Now these are essentially when you hover over the items, do you want them to pop out or push in? So if you click on pop, for example, I'm going to just click on play. Now when we hover over these, these are popping out of the page. And there's also another option, just go back, to select it as push. So in this case, now when I go over it, it's now pushing the item in rather than popping them out. So that just makes it a little bit easier to know when you're sort of selecting different items on the page. So now we've updated our app. Uh, we've got the home page as we want it. Uh, we can now click on the play button and we can see this is how the app is now going to display to people who start using it. So when they come onto here, they can see uh, any items which have been raised. Uh, they can click on the plus button across the top and they can fill out a new item um, and they can see um, all the sort of SharePoint items which have been previously submitted through here. Now, this app is now ready um, to be shared with people so they can actually start using this app and you can start collecting data. So to share the app, we can click on the file button. We click on share. Now, this is going to open the share screen for our app. And now what we need to do is type in the name of the people that we want to share this app with. So I'll just type in a couple of different colleagues. And you can see here now, uh, this is just going to add them as users. So there's two different uh, types of, sort of sharing this. If I was to just share this with them now, they would purely just be users of the app. So if they went into Office 365, selected Power Apps, they would then see the app appear and they would start to be able to use it and submit items and so forth. If I wanted them to be able to edit it, though, I would need to select this co-owner button on the right hand side. Um, and that would then mean that they would change them from being a user to being a co-owner and they'd actually be able to update and edit those items. So once I click on share, that's then going to share that um, that incident report app with them and they'll now be co-owners they'll be able to use the app as well as be able to update the app as well please have a look through um, the rest of the playlist for other ways of customizing this power app i hope you enjoyed that video if you need help we do offer professional services including bespoke development pre-built solutions, training packages, and a pay-as-you-go support service which bridges those knowledge gaps within your existing team. All of our employees are based in the UK and have years of experience deploying solutions with small businesses as well as large enterprise organisations. We offer a free consultation with a no-obligation quotation. If this all sounds good, drop us an email, ask for Dougie, and I look forward to hearing from you soon.